Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Slipsal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. 2024, baby. Ultimate Spider-Man's happening again. Woo! It's time for the War of the Symbiotes. And because Ben is writing it, you know that that is a misnomer. There's no war. <laughs> it's like a fight. Is it, is it like a secret war? I mean, in as much <laughs> as there are no like massive armies or opposing sides or people Actual in the war. know, there's no war. <laughs> and so, yeah, it can be a secret war. Why not? It's a but, metaphorical war. No, it physically happens. It's just kind of like... It's 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 an overinflation of the situation. Right. It's more like a kerfuffle, if anything. <laughs> but that doesn't fit on the marquee. There's, there's more of a war between uh, Peter and MJ's relationship. Certainly. Yeah. There's a scene where uh, they're making out. And by the way, you know, there's a lot of that in this. It's a teenage drama story, of course. Mm -hmm. But there's a sequence where they're making out, and they're making out on campus at school, right outside the school, behind the sign for the school. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. It's a little exposed. <laughs> we are hot on the heels of Ultimatum, one of the worst comic book oh, events no. of all time. Don't worry, we're never going to cover that again. We did it already about I know. 10 years ago. But the Spider-Man Spider has to deal with it, right? He does indeed. He can't escape it. And uh, it just goes because it changes day. everything. Did you hear the wasp was eaten <laughs> by a fat guy called, and wait for this, the blob? And she retorts, yeah, I heard that fat guy <laughs> is Firestar's dad. That's right. Which is canon. That's right. That was discussed not long ago no, on the show. No, on the, the last episode of Ultimate Spider-Man. Previously on Ultimate <laughs> Spider-Man. But yeah. They, the we, blob. <laughs> the worst one. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you this. The Spider-Man stuff in Ultimatum is all gold. For as bad as Ultimatum is, Ultimate Spider-Man is good. Polar opposite to the spectrum. Mm. Was any of that in Spider-Man titles? Was it collected? Here, there or? is a volume called Ultimatum, oh, which is okay. just all the Spider-Man stuff. Oh, we're skipping it? No, we're gonna oh. talk about it, because it's part of the saga. So this is all just fixing or dealing with the Eddie Brock Venom situation with Ultimate Spider-Man, because mm -hmm. it's a mess. Like when- you Remind the, me what it is. Okay. As I, I, I don't. Peter Parker's dad and Eddie Brock's dad worked together to develop the symbiote. Right. It was originally- it was like in, a cancer fighting suit. It was a suit. cancer fighting suit. Right. Uh, and so it, of course, was co-opted by uh, evil corporations, uh, clandestinely both the Parkers and the Brocks died in a uh, plane crash. Eddie is doing research on it at ESU, presumably. Peter gets a hold of it. It becomes his black costume finds out it's alive or whatever, and it uh, goes on to Eddie, and then, you know, it's kind of like what you remember, but it's uh, it's a lot more simple. Right, Rinse and, and then, where does he go to jail? No, or, okay. okay, so that's the thing, is that like, Venom goes away because he gets hit by like electricity, and he goes away. Mm. And Peter feels bad about it, but then has too much shit going on to, to, to look into it. Mm -hmm. He gets hit by electricity, so I guess it like, it like, has a loud sonic crack, like lightning and burn? No, nah, they don't even think it. Well, I mean, like, yes, like you could say, like, oh, electricity would be like a good ultimate version of Venom's weaknesses, but it's more like we're just throwing all that away. There's no sonic fire. Right. It's just like, uh, anything weakness. gets hit by lightning is going to have a problem. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like Venom's also weak to steamrollers and uh, <laughs> boulders, but only if they're especially big because he's especially strong. You know, it's like he's weak to whatever people are weak to. Right. It, it's, there's nothing. There's no special chink in the armor. Well, except uh, you could shoot him, right? He's not weak to bullets. No, he can, he's like, not. He, he can he can block the bullets yeah. with the suit. Yeah, no, it's true. But a special bullet. Yeah, like but an if you shot him with bullet, a cannon, right. yeah, but that might mess him up big time or kill him indeed. Right. So, okay. uh, Venom's been off the table for a while. We attempted to tell you a cool Venom story via the Ultimate Spider-Man GameCube game, which they said was canon, but then later said, no, it's not, because I want to tell that story and use those characters, <laughs> which includes like Silver Sable and stuff. So they threw that away. <sighs> it's still a fun game. It's worth checking out if you get your GameCube out and play it. <laughs> but uh, then they redid all those ideas in comic book form, and then we covered those as well. But uh, Venom is off the table for a while. He finally comes back after this. Uh, Venom was presumably killed by electricity and uh, that of course doesn't take because his body wasn't there. So where is Venom now? Well, uh, it's- Even if his body was there, I I'm writing a comic, I wanna bring him back. Oh, they, that actually happens in this where, <laughs> oh, I saw that body die, but they're back. <laughs> so it's 2008. It's always time for a Forrest Gump reference. Oh, yeah. Because Evergreen. you're Brian Michael Bennett. Yes. Oh, timeless. That's right. Yeah. It's a classic reference that everybody gets. 
especially in 2024. <laughs> um, but and and I, maybe it's not a Forrest Gump reference, but it's Eddie Brock sitting on a bench in a park on a beautiful day, eating chocolates, talking to an old woman. There is an old woman, but there's no chocolates. Okay, uh, but. He talks to this old woman. Is he waiting for a bus? No, he's not. Eddie is on a bench. He's talking to a lady, and he gives all the exposition for, like, what happened in, like, volumes and volumes ago. Right. Because you forgot. Because, of course you forgot. Yeah. All you care about is that Venom is in the book. He's on the cover. F, yes. War of the Symbiotes. Holy shit. Oh, and he'll tell her anything. She's going to die anyway soon. Bingo. (laughs) Not just because she's old. I assume assume it's because she was old. (laughs) Yeah, well. (laughs) And no one will believe you. You're senile. That's true. But no. In fact, he uh, he does whisper when he talks about Peter Parker and Spider Man. He does tell her like, "Oh, hey, listen, Peter Parker is Spider Man. I bet you didn't know that. You know, haha." What? It's oh, like, that's he's just giving it away. Oh yeah. yeah, just 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 giving away the store. But it's okay because as the like storytelling like, convention, yeah, she shouldn't say anything because he ate her already. The point is <laughs> like Eddie's telling the story and he is narrating the entire issue and it's punctuated by flashbacks. There are flashbacks within flashbacks within flashbacks no, in the no. story and I'm like. Oh, why would you do this? And it's because all that Venom stuff happened months ago. So like, or years ago in the actual real world. So how do I explain that? Oh, geez, I guess I say it was months ago. And I guess because I couldn't be fucked to do a story about Venom six volumes ago, I'll do it now and retcon that those things happened before or during other stories I was telling. And you're like, great. I'll try to keep it straight, but throughout this uh, story, there's a storytelling convention of Eddie explaining things or narrating the story, but you might notice if you're an eagle-eyed reader that each person he's talking to is different. He's telling one contiguous narrative. That's definitely a Forrest Gump reference. Oh, because yeah. that's exactly what happens. Like, exactly. It changes. Right. To but the movie. I bet he didn't eat all the people he was talking to <laughs> on the bench in Forrest Gump. Well, uh-huh. no. So Eddie's doing this exposition dump while eating people. We won't find out that he's actually eating all these people until the last page. I mean, it looks like he's eating someone right there. Yeah, well, that's, that's actually a flashback to when he discovered he was eating people. <laughs> Yeah, no, oh. he's telling you, like, what he's been up to. You know, I ran into some cops when I was fighting Spider-Man. I got hit by an electrical wire, and then I uh, went away. When I woke up, I, I had this insatiable hunger, and so I was in this park. I was being a homeless guy, and then I saw this runner, and then I ate her, and I felt a little better, and then I started eating more people, and uh, so now that's who I am. I run around, and I eat people. In fact, uh, not too long ago, a few months ago, in fact, I was in, like, some crazy, you know, war zone in Manhattan where Spider-Man was fighting what? Rhino, and uh, I saw Spider-Man, and when I saw Spider-Man, when I was in his vicinity, I felt amazing. Like, I felt better than when I eat people. And I was wondering what that's all about. And while that happened, Peter had a horrible headache. So, like, they're having inverse effects on each other. When Eddie gets near Peter, he feels great. When Peter gets near Eddie, he feels pain. And Peter doesn't know why, because he didn't see Eddie at the first place, but anyway. If he's been eating these people, why did it not come up before that, like, Spider-Man had to deal with the fact that he's eating people? Well, he hasn't started eating people until after he disappeared. Like that, all that venom stuff that happened already, that it's, was pre eating uh, people. It's New York, people disappear all the time. Well, that's true. Spider Man can't investigate them all. Yeah, Peter doesn't know they're venom related. He just knows people are no longer there where they once were, and he wouldn't even hear about it because, again, it's not Spider Man related. Or at least he doesn't know that. Right, okay. So while Eddie was wandering the world, and when I say world, I mean just the five boroughs of Manhattan. (laughs) It's all the world I need. That's that's why I don't need a license. Hey, I'm walking around here. (laughs) Uh, He gets attacked by Silver Sable and the Wild Pack. Hey, remember them? And also you played a video game where that happened. Cool. So Venom gets engaged by the Wild Pack. They attack him. (gasps) I've been wondering when those were going to get together. I know, when they were going to get together. And he eats them. Uh, he, att- he attempts to eat them. Oh. He separates Sable from the Wild Pack, attacks her, scares the pants off her, and then runs away. Uh, meanwhile, he's like, that's what I've been up to. You know, That was the first thing I did. You know, oh. Well, first thing I did was start eat people. Then I wandered around and Silver Sable attacked me, so I attacked them back, and then I got away. Cool. Totally worth pages. Thank you. What? What was the story behind Silver Sable attacking him? Like, she was hired to stop him? Yes. Yes, that's, inc- that's correct. Okay. So then... During that time, months ago, Venom went wandering to one of the museums in Manhattan, Mm -hmm. who coincidentally is being visited by Peter Parker's class. Peter and Mary Jane are going to this museum. They're having a good time. Eddie's there. He has been homeless for a while, a couple weeks at least. Mm. So, oh, maybe he got it on a free day. Well, no, he it is not because (laughs) once he immediately goes to the doors, they're like, "Get the hell out of here." 
Right. Probably because he smells and he hasn't bathed in weeks and he's wearing clothes he found in the garbage. Uh, but anyway, so they're trying to get him out of there. And as they do, he venoms out, which triggers Peter's headaches because Peter doesn't see what's happening. He's in like another wing. And so then Eddie gets thrown out. He becomes Venom. He jumps through the window and attacks. Then Peter puts on a Spider-Man costume and then fights Venom. And he's like, oh my God, Eddie, you're back. Like, I feel personally responsible for your well-being because... Yep. Right. But, uh, but you're not going to eat people. That's well, totally different. He didn't know about the eating people. He still hasn't oh, learned about that. Although wow. it doesn't really like blow his mind. There's no moment where he's like, you're eating people. <laughs> Although that would definitely happen in this book. Venom fights Spider-Man. They fight all the way through the museum outside where they're met by the wild pack. Silver Sable tracked him down and met him out there. So then, oh no, now it's Spider-Man and Venom and Silver Sable in the wild pack. They attack them. Of course, Spider-Man is occasionally persona non grata, so they're going to attack him too. Pete's been on the wrong end of the Silver Sable Wild Pack as well. Right. Uh, and then uh, we wrap up the issue, this issue in particular, with the last guy to talk to Eddie on the bench going like, hey, wait, that was you, the guy who like attacked the museum. And then he goes, Wah! and we see what Venom has been doing on the park bench the entire time. Oh. And, Did uh, he literally just like leave the museum like 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 an hour ago? That was what? weeks ago, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's gonna do it? I ate it today. <laughs> We're on the park bench. That was presumably present day. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we go back to the museum incident, which was, quote, several weeks ago. Okay. And we, we catch up with the action of the last issue where Silver Sable and the Wild Pack engage Venom and Spider-Man. Then we go back months ago. And I'm like, months from the several weeks? Or from or now. Or months from now. <laughs> Well, either way, it's still months. <laughs> Which perspective are you saying this from? Well, because depending on how many months there are, it could be years. You know, we're not talking about being parents that tell their children that they're 48 months old. <laughs> now the action is going to take place several months from several weeks ago. Keeping track, this is after Venom was defeated, but before he's on the park bench. Okay. Well, and before he was at the the museum. museum. Well, it it had been. The museum incident was weeks, but now we're going before that, months yeah. ago. And then, in that sequence, we see the rhino incident again, you know, where, oh, Peter oh, had a yeah. headache when he encountered Betty. Yeah. And it's, is it a robo rhino? It's a rhino in an exosuit. Well, it's a guy in a, it's, it's a guy in a rhino exosuit. Okay. Uh, okay. So you can't see his face. No. Yeah. Or when you do, it's like gray and insane. Right, like he also paints his face. Right. It's like it's a machine up to like here, and then he also he's like. It, his face I've seen to it. It's in. sometimes. I mean, it's, it's just a suit all the way up to there, which makes sense. But like, it's the joints that are throwing me off. Yeah, things look like cable instead of muscle. Yeah, but it's, and but I didn't it's know if it was metal. big. Just a robot. There's yeah, just a no. thin man arm in the middle of that. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's room for his arm. Well, I mean, there. he's got a huge head. I don't know. Mm. All I know is, months ago, we then go to the next day, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, you got to stop. Yeah, which day, months ago next, plus one. From the weeks ago? Several weeks ago, <laughs> months ago from that, the next day from then. Right. So this should have just been a comic book. We should have just started this comic book. It should have come out months ago. <laughs> yes. We're years. <laughs> years, actually. It would be years. Right? Yep. Oh, I just didn't think to write it then, but now I want to set the events yeah. then, and I want to write it in the style as if I had written it yes. when it was... When well, it was but I also can't... I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to rewrite all of these things and put them in cr actual chronological right. right. order. <laughs> like, you can't... <laughs> just take all the pages out. Yeah. Make an ultimate, ultimate oh, Spider-Man. That's in the correct fucking order. I hope someone does. <laughs> Please, just just give me, the, give me the reading order. Like, all right, so you can read volumes one through seven, then stop, and then read pages 19 through 25 of... Of volume 20 yeah and then go back to volume 8 like in this context Pete and Mary Jane are going to high school Pete had a fight with Rhino and was that the Rhino horn pierced his pants and exposed at least one of his ass cheeks and some paparazzi got a snapshot of it and it's circulating the internet so everybody's seeing yeah, but it's not like he's got like birthmarks there no 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 he's not concerned about losing his identity right he's, a, he, he's vain right he's just like, like everybody people are seeing my, my ass yeah, but they don't know it's yours. No, but it, it but it is mine. I see. And I won't be able to resist checking on the internet whether people like it or not. You know, like uh, who knows? All I know is that's as close as we get to it. Right. Uh, but he he is begging Mary Jane to help fix his suit because I, he needs to get the suit fixed without the hole in the keister. Uh, she's talking about how you need to like go to a doctor, like because he's, he's talking about the the headaches he's having. Uh, she's like, you fought like vampires and venoms and you know, X-Men and stuff like that. Like, you've you've been exposed to a 
plethora of chemicals, radiation, trauma, concussions. Genetic nonsense. There's a lot of crazy crap that you've been spilled in, bit by, or you should probably get checked out. And he's like, all right. Yeah, but do I have to go to like a comic book doctor or can no. I go to like a regular doctor? He wouldn't even know where to go. <laughs> now, Just that being said, like. Go if, to read. Right. If you're Peter Parker Spider Man yeah. in this world, you could go to Nick Fury and have a S.H.I.E.L.D. doctor check you out or go to read and have them check you out. Yeah. He does neither of those things. I know. I'll ask my Aunt May. Man, that's your answer for everything. <laughs> no, his his answer is to just check himself out. The, the answer is, mm. <laughs> or the prescription is more wheat cakes. Yeah. yeah. Eat up. Well, he's 15, so it's definitely not going to a doctor. Hell no. That would be well, the last because, thing I'll do. Well, I mean. Well, he also can't afford it. He's the reality 15. is, if he's 15, like, his aunt should just make him an appointment. Right. You know, like, he doesn't even probably know his doctor's name. <laughs> if he even has a PCP, which I doubt he does. The you don't remember your pediatrician's name? No. Yes, I do remember my pediatrician's name. Yeah, me too. Yeah, of course. I don't. Dr. Handler. Dr. Zimmerman. Nice. Zimmerman. That's fun. <laughs> oh, fine, but Handler sucks. Right. I had several, so I don't know, because uh, we moved around. <laughs> we moved around a lot. Yeah. Aww. So I didn't... It wasn't like one for like like 15 years yeah, that no, I like, remember the name of. Yeah, it was, it was one for 15 years. Yeah. So Spider-Man's swinging around the city and he bumps into the ultimate Beetle. The Beetle is a character that I don't care for. Yeah, we've talked about the Beetle. Hot I take. I find the Beetle boring and uninteresting. Mm. I love his both suit. His suit looks Beetle awesome. and Blue Beetle. I like Blue Beetle. Mm. Both of them. But this Beetle... This is just the Beetle? No. The Beetle. Yeah. Uh, and, and why not the Beetle? We got the Scorpion, the Spider-Man, we got Jackals and Mysterios. Why not a Beetle? Is he a uh, bad guy? Yeah. Is he British? Bad. No, it's B E E T L E. They but do make like, that joke though. Yeah. 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 But no, he's not British. He's actually Eastern European in this, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the Beetle is introduced. What's his, what's his deal? What's his deal indeed, right? You saw me, he gets defeated with the manure truck and we call him the Dung Beetle. In relation More to the Beetle. Man, yeah, perspective. Yeah. Bendis, you had such an opportunity. Like, it just lobbed right It was right, right the there. Floor. I mean, if you, if you have to use the Beetle. Yeah. So. And Which if anyone's going to make a joke about it, yeah. that's Peter that Parker. That would have justified putting the beetle in this book. Yeah, is to make a dung beetle reference. Oh, so Spidey fights the beetle, and then ultimately the beetle ends up at Roxxon headquarters and then uses like some kind of vibrational technique to phase through the wall. Oh. But it's not like it's an innate superpower. It's part of the suit. The suit is able to vibrate him at such a high frequency that it phases through the wall, which I think would shake his bones to yeah, dust. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would kill you. He would just be sure. goo in a suit. <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing, actually. I'd be like, okay, now I just do... And then just he goes ah! through, and then Spider-Man goes through the window, sees his suit the there. Suit just collapsed on the ground. Yeah, and he opens it up, and just everything that he was just oozes out the faceplate. <laughs> All right, we're still working bugs out in the suit. <laughs> oh, damn it! That wasn't even meant to be a pun. Oh. Nice. But, you know, Roxxon is the source of a lot of superficial, ham-fisted, corporate espionage nonsense that Bendis can't help himself but shoehorn into this series. Mm. And for the life of me, it's never paid off. Mm. Every time. Like, there's there's that whole plot where, like, the guy whose actual name is Roxxon, and I'm like, there's... You don't make it a... Exxon isn't named after a guy. What is it's it? It's a named portmanteau after? of other companies. Uh, yeah. But no. What about the? What about Exxon Valdez? <laughs> That's from Exxon. <laughs> That's the name maybe, of a man. Maybe this guy. No. Got his, maybe this guy. You're thinking it. of Juan Valdez, and he sells coffee. Yeah. I know guy. you're thinking of that. <laughs> this guy sells you sludge in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Roxxon guy just loves Roxxon so much that he, he had changed his name, his name. Legally changed. No. He I, was a pathetic loser. I'm Mr. Like, Roxxon. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves Brox Rocks. Yes! <laughs> you know, they don't even make Brox Rocks anymore. <laughs> of course not. I've never seen them. I, I've never seen them in the real world. I've only seen them in advertising. I would love to eat a Brox Rock. It, all right. If any fan out there has Brox Rocks, has Brox Rocks, Rock. ship me some Brox Rocks. Don't buy them. But if you have no. them, Yes, and you want, you're looking to get rid no, of them. Go ahead, you can buy them. That's cool. They can buy them. Okay, yeah. but like, don't spend like <laughs> yeah, don't overspend three hundred dollars no, to try no. on eBay or yeah, something. Yeah, no, no, no. no. The so spider smashes into Roxxon to fight the beetle, who's clearly there to like I don't know get corporate secrets or who gives a shit. Yeah. What that's... are we doing? Symbiote war? <laughs> beetle? Does he, is he a symbiote? No. Then what are we doing? Yeah, we're getting there. We're, we're building, building the there. story. This is part of you know what was happening right? around that time or something. Is Eddie still talking? Is this his narration? No, he, uh, he wouldn't even know. No, he's 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 still talking no, about this himself. This is omniscient narrator now. That's right. We're we're just seeing the action. Yeah. So Pete goes to the bugle the next day. Mm. The next day from 
The Beatle. The next day. Yeah, from the story. From months ago, the, from weeks ago. From the old issue that was never published that we're now reading. Yes. <laughs> So Pete is like using the bugle resources to investigate Roxon because he's just like, what's going on? Like, right. Why is he there? And he's like, you know, he's talking to like Mary Jen on the phone about this at mm -hmm. work. He's like, every time I Google Roxon, it's always in conjunction with Latveria. What do you think that's all about? Mm. So then he gets call waiting and he's like, hold on, I got another call. So he takes it and it's Nick Fury and he's like, get, get your ass upstairs. And his doctor would be like, you keep my country's name <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> How dare you? I saw your ass cheek today. You have no integrity. Uh, so yeah, Pete uh, goes up to the roof and it's Nick Fury and he's got like a crazy awesome future <laughs> helicopter thing and he's like, you just you just show up my work? You just unannounced? And he's like, yup. <laughs> okay, well I guess that's fair, yeah. And mm. not only yup, but like, I'm S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. No one knows I'm here right now. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they do. Why not? There's a helicopter on the roof. People gotta know he's there. Yeah. It's a stealth chopper. It's a stealth chopper, it's true. <sighs> like from Goldeneye. Exactly. So uh, Nick's like, listen. It's above your pay grade, this whole Roxxon, Latveria, Beetle thing. Knock it off. Uh, I would knock it off, except I ran into him last night. Right, well like, but yeah. now that you are well, also aware. Also you're here telling me to knock it off, so now I'm definitely not gonna knock it off. So Pete goes back downstairs and the pilot's like, is he gonna knock it off? And Nick's like, I hope not. And he's like, so you told him that to make, he's like a 15 year old boy, of course he's gonna do the opposite of what I said. <laughs> Yeah, but also, like, did you need to do that? He was probably going to keep doing he it anyway. He was literally Googling it right now. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to make sure he kept Googling it. Yeah, so then we go back to several <laughs> weeks ago. Ah! No, oh, is this it? is several weeks ago from the present. Or is it several weeks ago from two months ago? Let's just say it's back to the museum. Oh, it's the museum. We're back to the museum. We, we can only know what time it is from the events that are happening. That's right. <laughs> Being similar to previous yeah. events. Okay. So Eddie gets arrested and they take him away to one month ago. And I'm like, from when? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All we know is, I think, because we're on a new issue and we're not dealing with the other time, I think this is one month from the present. Right. I think we're going to dispel with the months and the weeks. Right. Now it is one month from today, which is to say 2008. So Eddie wakes up and he's in like a futuristic prison and Bolivar Trask is there. Bolivar Trask is- I'm sorry, you mean the Godfather? It certainly looks like anyone. Tim Dalton, Tony Stark, the Godfather, you take your pick. Bolivar Trask is a competitor of Roxxon. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm going no. with Marlon Brando on this one. Yeah. So he's working with Adrian Toomes. <gasps> the oh Vulture, boy. yay! Have we Will seen he the be? Vulture? We've seen the Vulture okay. a little bit in relation to, to the Roxxon situation. Okay. Adrian Toomes tries to kill Roxxon. The right. literal guy. The guy Roxxon, right. <laughs> but I mean, by way of killing Roxxon, he will also hopefully kill right. the company. Or he'd well. get to own it or something. I don't think he's Because you keep what you kill. Yeah, he's a necromonger. That's true, he's not a necromonger, he's just a vulture. <laughs> but anyway. They eat carrion. That's true. Well, what, the necromongers? No, vultures. Yeah, but yeah, that doesn't but make that... them a necromonger. <laughs> yeah, necromonger's not a real thing. <laughs> it's just an obscure, stupid science fiction reference. All right, fine. Vultures eat what they find. <laughs> That's true. Fucking you amazing. Better, you we... eat what you find. Let's just call vultures necromongers. Let's just call, yeah, like scavengers necromongers. I love it. I'm just gonna do that yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, look, a necromonger. Uh, excuse me. Well, they keep well, what they, they kill. Oh, they eat the dead. They eat what they find. They they are mongers of necro stuff. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. They they reap what they sow. It's oh, you never heard of necromongers? Oh, you never heard of? Oh, I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> So, for being an orthologist, you are uh, not very well informed. Now I know what to get you for your uh, birthday. Just, they're, they're necromongers. Those are technically called necromongers. You know, those are technically necromongers. <laughs> You're technically the dumbest person I ever met. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Trask and uh, Tombs are talking to Eddie, and the, there are a lot of pages and a lot of dialogue for them to say, Trask made a deal with Eddie Brock's dad when they were working together to get the suit made in the first place. To and get Provasic on the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> working with Peter's dad or working secretly? Secretly, oh. under the nose of, of, of Richard Parker. Okay, okay. so so that's cool. Peter's dad was on, was on the up and up. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, uh, we can't besmirch his that's name. What, no. I, that's why I asked, because I'm like, yeah, oh, no. is this gonna be like, oh, what was your dad into, What was Peter? my dad up to? No, it's literally Richard Parker is trying to make a cancer fixing suit made of goop with Eddie Brock's dad. Mm -hmm. Eddie Brock's dad is like, I'm gonna sell this suit for out from under my business partner and fellow scientist to Bolivar Trask. Trask has like, claims he has contracts drawn up. Like technically, I own the thing you're wearing. 
and I <laughs> want it, and I, I'm going to make good on the deal that I made with your dad because I think there's some like good practical applications associated with be with having a Venom on my in my in product my, catalog. In my product catalog, like right. I own a Venom, sweet. Right. But it is kind of attached to you, so I'm gonna <laughs> need you to like willingly give it to me. Give it to you. Why would I give it to you? I didn't. You didn't do anything to earn it. You're so, not giving it to me fast enough. No. Just give it to me faster. So Venom, like Venom's out and tries to attack them, and he hits the energy bars, and he doesn't die. And then we have to go hours earlier. The the, the timeline for the museum fight is simple, I think. A while ago, let's say several weeks ago, Pete and Mary Jane go on a. What do you call it? A field trip. Thank you. Pete and Mary Jane go on a field trip after he'd already fought the Rhino. Yes. Venom is also coincidentally at that field trip. Because he knew that Spider-Man made him feel not hungry anymore when he saw the fight. Exactly. And trailed him. So he trailed him. They or fight. tailed him, I guess. That's right, he tailed him. Venom fights Spider-Man. They get outside. They bump into Silver Sable and the Wild Pack, who have been hunting Venom since before. Mm -hmm. Then Venom is kiboshed. And he's arrested and taken away to Bolivar Trask. Okay. Or As Trask. he's being taken to Trask, probably. Yes, there's the van Here's, that's yeah. leaving with Eddie. Yeah, so we're cutting back now. We cut forward from the fight. Venom being defeated yes. to a few hours ahead, and now we're cutting back to right at the end of the fight. Exactly. Okay. It did not need to be I told I promise you, it makes more sense when you're reading it, <laughs> but Well, because you it, get context from the panels and what true. you're seeing and what they're saying and so forth, but yes. we're not going to that level of detail, right. so you have to explain. But all the super us. people have gone, so now it's just the regular police, so obviously the situation is much worse. Oh, so Sable just like, <laughs> oh yeah. She's like, okay, well. well she's like, well, I don't want to get arrested, because yeah. I'm clearly not like on the up and up. I don't work for S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so the she's cops gone. don't know I'm here. No, exactly. <laughs> so the cops are like, freeze! And uh, Pete's like, all right, look, wait, hang on. And he's like, please, like, what? don't shoot me or arrest me right now. Like, I, The only bad guy that was here was, was put into a van and driven away. <laughs> and then a lady with a baby goes, he saved my baby! And he goes, you know what, lady? Thank you. <laughs> Nobody ever takes a minute to point out when to I do something good yeah. in a big moment like this. Thank you. And the cops are like, all right. So they like they holster their weapons and they start talking to Spider-Man about like what happened. Okay. It's awesome. like a statement. And then later that night, okay, at least we're in the same 24 hour period. Okay. Peter goes well, we home. Could've, we could have just gone, oh, Venom's arrested. Peter Man is held at gunpoint. Yes. Venom is held by Trask. Yes. Right. And, and then, now we go to the Mary Jane. Yeah, we right. have, but we didn't. No. Because I went to the is Quentin it, Tarantino it's School not of Writing. enough. Yeah. It's got to it's gotta keep your interest. Yeah. You can't know what's going on, really. right? Right. Yeah, you really have need complete narrative whiplash at all times. All I'm going to say is comics and confusing both start with C. Coincidence also starts with C. <laughs> <laughs> I got you there. <laughs> That's a damn good point. So Pete's like, "All right, I, I, I'm sick of the headaches. I almost got shot by cops today, and I have been shot by police before. It's no, it's no picnic. Mm. So I'm going to check myself out. I'm not going to go to the doctor. Terrible idea. But I will." take my own blood and look at it under a microscope in my basement. And maybe figure out where the headaches are coming from. Yes. So uh, he does. There's actually a cute moment where he's he like... He made web fluid in this, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. so he's, he is he's smart. Genius. Yeah, but like you don't know what you're looking at when you're looking at your own blood. Like, And literally he does. He looks at his own blood and he sees like, you know, red blood cells and some and kind of like... there's like little venoms in there. Like, yes! Rrr, like grabbing them. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, what's that? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm hey, like, that's fair. You should probably ask a biologist because they probably do know what it is. Right. They've probably seen it before. Yeah, too bad the only one you know is a lizard man and he never appears in the main book. He only appears in like team up books. But anyway, he's like, oh, I got a ping on my Google alerts. I have a Google alert set up for any time that Venom or Eddie Brock is cited or, or, or talked about in the news. Mm, you probably she's get like, a lot of pings. Right. She's like, wow, you could do that? I didn't know that. And he's like, oh yeah, no, you can do a lot with Google. Google's an amazing product. <laughs> What? What is this product placement? Yeah, he's like, I'm sorry. I got, well, I mean, like, I mean, it's 2008. This is early Google. Yeah, he, he doesn't actually say it's an amazing product. It's just like he just uses it to well, I know, great but effect. It's... But it's like, yeah. I mean, I appreciate just him not calling it gargle or some nonsense, <laughs> fake, non copyright, you know, word. Right. But he's like, I'm sorry. I got to cut this date short. Leave. And she's like, This was a date. Yeah. What? That's not a date. Just hanging out in your basement. We got back from a field trip in which you fought a supervillain. <laughs> yes. We're held at gunpoint by the cops. We come back, you look at your blood, and then leave. Yeah. 
At what point was this a date in Peter's mind? Well, between he was hanging out those with her. two moments, I made out with you. Right. Because I said, hey, you want to come over while I look at my blood? Yeah. And you said yes. You said That's yes. That's a date. So then we go 20 minutes prior to this. <laughs> this is the aftermath of the, the Trask yes. conversation? So now... Why? Why? Why are they doing this? So now Venom is in a tube surrounded by scientists and Silver Sable. And you're like, okay, I guess they hired Silver Sable to like protect them from Venom since she's in the Venom hunting business. And then the beetle shows up, attacks them, frees Venom, cuts off a piece of Venom, and then leaves. You can do that? Evidently. So her job was, I guess, to bring Venom in yes. to them? Yes. She was hired by Trask oh, to capture not to stop and bring Venom, in Venom. But to no. specifically acquire she's Venom. She's no cop for or superhero. Them. No, right. she's bringing Venom in for money. Okay. To Trask. And Beatles from yeah, Roxxon, a, a competing corporation. No, Beatles no. is from a competing interest. He broke into Roxxon. Oh, he broke into Roxxon. Different oh, Okay. Company. Yeah, right. yeah, but uh, and what is we Beatles? We all thought that, yeah, he, that was his home base of operation. Right, no, no, no. he was breaking into Roxxon. So it's, what is the connection between Roxxon Trask and, and Beetle. Right. He and works. what's up with Latveria? So Venom is a little tired, so he eats a human being. And you're like, nah. And then goes and gives chase with Beetle. Attacks Beetle. And there's a fantastic sequence where it all goes crabbed. Venom and Beetle like come down to Earth. They're in the middle of like Times Square or whatever. They're attacking each other. There's a big fight. Venom is getting weak and tired. Then he sees a mounted policeman and he eats the horse. Oh my God. Okay, that's the mistake right there. Uh, he's hungry enough you're gonna to have one. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Yeah. Now, it may get gummed up because, of course, this is how you get Elmore's glue. <laughs> Only if he renders it. That just means that when he tries to poop it out... It's going to get... It's going to get stuck. It's going to get stuck. It's going to be tough. But uh, I love the visual of this dude being like, ah! like, this guy is like, my horse is being consumed by a goop monster, and I know I'm going to go in with it. Yeah, because I'm in <laughs> the saddle. I, my feet are in the stirrups. <laughs> it's true. But I love just how unhinged it is. It's a completely unhinged paddle of Venom being like, <laughs> like it's eating a horse, and the horse is like, <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah, this is but horrific. you just ate a horse, and now he has to die. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah he killed you, the horse. You don't, you don't hurt horses. The animal is blameless. Yeah, beautiful creatures. What are you doing? So, I hear they're the most noble of creatures. <laughs> they are indeed. Yes, Paul Simonson. They are one of the most noble creatures, and they are worthy of immortalization in some of the most badass alien characters in the Marvel Universe. So Spider-Man swings in, and he intercedes, and he kicks Venom in the face. Says, Insert funny quip here. I don't have time for this. And so uh, they fight. Does Venom spit some horseshoes at him? No, he does. That'd be crazy. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so Venom and Spider-Man grapple for a minute. Uh, Spider-Man gets thrown off. And then the suit oozes off of Eddie and then clings to Peter and oh. envelops him into his black costume again. I think in the video game they set this up. They don't really carry it over in this. Why doesn't Venom have the cool logo, right? Like, he should because he gets it from Spider-Man. Spider-Man had the cool logo. The point is to see Venom look like Venom. Why? Do we keep insisting on making him a black goop monster? Well, in the GameCube game, there was a plot where it's like, there's a piece of Venom that's missing that was always still in Peter. And when he gets it, then he gets the logo. As if like that was like an incomplete part of him. Huh. But- Like when, a layer in Photoshop, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't do that. And he doesn't get the logo anyway. Whatever. <laughs> So it's just, he, oh, no, we will forget that. Yeah, we'll worry that. He just doesn't I'm also really upset that when the uh, Venom symbiote goes back onto Peter, yeah. you don't just see Eddie Brock <laughs> with the, the fucking horse inside of him. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> he should be. No, he's just naked, and he's like, no, why did you leave me? And it's like, no, you can't do that. Eddie Brock is like that in the 616 universe because the symbiote is a sentient being. The only thing you get, really, the sentience in this is that Venom keeps thinking, like, hungry! But is that Venom or is that just the person wearing Venom that feels hungry because they're wearing the suit? Yeah, but this suit just chose to leave Eddie and go on That's the true, but did it choose to do that or is it like a, you know, it's... It's like a worm. Like it's not like it has a higher degree of intelligence. It just knows what's familiar, you know, or, or more powerful. Or maybe it was missing its other piece. It could be, exactly. The Ultimates are scrambled, that is to say the Avengers. Oh. 
And you're like, oh man, and they do this big fun splash page, but in it, uh, Nick Fury yells out, okay, time to earn your paychecks. And I wanna say I've seen that line yelled to the ultimate specifically, no fewer than three times. <laughs> and I would be sick of it. Well, that's because the Ultimates actually get paid. They do. They Versus are the Avengers right. who just get who a just, free place to stay and you know are bankrolled by Tony Stark. They well, that's true. Well, it was, they live in Tony Stark's childhood home. Like that's that's fine. So uh, you know, so the Ultimates fight Peter wearing the Venom suit, and uh, ultimately Nick Fury, who is there wearing like a can, power suit to help them. Can Peter not? control himself? No. Can he just be like, all right, we're not going to attack people? No, no. He's like, ah! And the suit's he's like, let's go! Or he's overwhelmed. The suit is like whatever. screaming. Like, it, it's 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 forcing Peter to react and it's yelling that it's hungry in his head. And so, and he's also just, he has but been it, faced with a barrage of attacks. He's got to defend himself. And every time he defends himself, it looks like he's attacking back. But that's very weird because the only time that Eddie didn't feel anything mm -hmm. was when he was close to Peter. It's true, yeah. He felt hungry earlier. He felt earlier. good when he was with Peter, yeah, but the suit left him and went to Peter, so now he doesn't feel like anything. He just feels like Well, Eddie. the suit's also no, different Eddie than it was No, Eddie like that, but I thought, I thought the suit was like hungry. Yeah. For but when Peter, it was around Peter, it's it like, good. oh, I no longer yeah, feel but that hunger. Right. Nah, yeah. but it still is, though. No, but it still is, though. Yeah. And now it's on him, it's just like, oh, well, I'm hungry again. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's right. Because Peter was only like part of it, maybe. Yeah. Like, it was also hit no. by lightning, so maybe it's like, I'm effed up no, from it's, that. It, it, yeah. Uh, it's missing a piece, but it's not the piece that Beetle took. Oh. It's just something it, else. It's the piece that's in Peter. It, it's the little black dots. You'd think, yes, exactly, the little black dots. But then it comes up again later with something else, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But the point Wait, is... Wait, it's not that? I mean, it, it, sure. Let's say it is, because it is, but also it's something else. There's another thing. Okay. And that's when Venom is like, I'm finally complete. Okay. And it's like, you look incom you look like a mess. Look at my final form. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now you see me as I truly am. <laughs> But uh, as they're fighting, somebody yells out, like, Parker. Oh, it's Eddie. He's like, that's what you got, Parker! They're gonna kick your ass, you piece of shit, because you took my, my murder suit! They made yep. me feel, like, all horrible all the time. And everyone <laughs> around him goes, hey, did they equal just all Spider-Man Parker? Yeah. Oh, no. Nick Fury's the only one who's nearby. He's like, Parker? Well, that's a shame. Time to right. uh, silence you. <laughs> right. He's just, well, no, I wish. That'd be amazing. Nick Fury's like, oh, man, you look, uh, you look tired. <laughs> Go. <laughs> no, I just one problem oh. solved. Yep. You're welcome. Hang on a second. Blam. Yeah. Oh no! I think Hawkeye oh, killed that guy. Oh, the crossfire. <laughs> oh, friendly oh, fire. Oh. No, no one's gonna miss you. So Nick like reluctantly tells Thor to bring down the lightning, and that like envelops Peter, and he like freaks out. He looks like he's gonna burst, and then uh, he just goes dark, and then wakes up as Peter Parker in his bedroom. Hmm. And it's noon, and Aunt May comes in, just like my parents did at noon, and is like, what do you have to say for yourself, waking up at noon? And it's like, uh, uh, I'm 15, and I'm tired all the time. Uh, I also feel like I got hit by a train last night. Yeah, exactly. So Does she know he's... Yes, by now she knows that he's, okay. he's Spider-Man. Okay. And she's just like, yeah, you need to wake up. So then Peter goes to his computer. I and think gets... uh, Spider-Man needs to do some chores around the house. That's right. <laughs> so Pete checks his emails, and it just says, come over when you wake up. It's from Nick Fury. Okay. One eyed eagle at ultimates.gov. <laughs> it should be ultimates.ninja. <laughs> I mean, every cool website has to have a .ninja. So Pete checks so is like. We're still in the past, right? This still happened like a month ago or something? Yes. Okay. That's right. Right. Yes, we are. Okay. Because Eddie, Park Bench Eddie, is not this. Right. Yeah. That's right. Right. He, so we know he gets the Venom suit back. Of course. Like, how? Yeah, but how? How does he get the Venom suit back? Yeah. So uh, Pete checks to see if he has a Spider-Man costume. He doesn't, so he grabs the spare, which has the hole in the butt, which Mary Jane sewed up. He goes to the Triskelion, the headquarters of the Ultimates, meets up with them, and here is where we get the big moment that I have been talking about since the beginning of the show. So there's this moment where uh, you know he's talking to Nick Fury and Tony Stark, Iron Man, and they're all talking about like the suit. And I love Tony Stark because he's like, why do you keep calling it a suit? It's like, not. It's I not have suit. Yeah, this is a suit. That is goop. Like, yeah, stop. it's a like goop suit. Right, and it's like, no, that's not anything. So they're talking, but uh, this is a, a convention that uh, J.K. Rowling and Brian Blackleben suffer from, which is you gotta end every single chapter with a massive cliffhanger. Right. Gotta be a big moment. And in this moment, in the past, we have Peter who gets like really uppity about like where the suit is. You know? Well, yeah. 
They like, it attacked him. Well, I would want to know where it is too. He yeah. doesn't care necessarily. I mean, he does care about the common good. But he's more like my father built that suit to cure cancer, and I'm the only one who could speak for him, and I want it to be used for good. Right. Because you know, he's my father's legacy. He's like, no, you're your father's legacy. But anyway. Well, plus this is yeah, a Venom Yeah, but I'm too book. dumb to notice yeah. that. And exactly. uh, whenever Venom's not on the page, somebody should be asking, where is the Venom suit? Well, and we also need to get to that nice. war. Right. So far, I've seen one thing symbiote. Is the war? It is kind of a war, but it says War of the Symbiotes. Oh, there's supposed to be more than one. There should be, presumably. But, uh, right. but there won't be. But while they're talking about it, you know, Pete gets upset about it, and he's just like, my father built this thing. And Nick Fury... Uh, wraps up this issue by saying, your father may have started the next damn world war. <gasps> and you're like, okay, but like, what? No. And one day they do address it and he's just like, oh, no, no, I just said that. I what? Just, I just wanted you to shut up. Yeah. It's just, like, how they don't would, ever answer they exactly don't. what he meant? No. Well, you know, because like your the dad- The war of the symbiotes. Right. The world war of symbiotes. It, oh, but it's, it's very nice because you've got Iron Man on one side and Cap on the other. Yeah, you got a Civil War like in Spider-Man's eyes. War. That's true. But it's just like, what a cheat. You're right. It's just a big mic drop moment where if you pay attention to what's going on right now, Nick Fury isn't even here. Carol Danvers is in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the present. So Yeah, but this was like a month ago or whatever. Yeah. So then, <laughs> Right before she left. So now we're three weeks ago. Okay. From presumably the present. Right. And this does actually refer to an incident that happened in the damn book. Now we can finally call back to moments that legitimately happened in previous issues of this story. Okay. Which is, uh, there was a break-in at the Triskelion, Osborn gets out, and if you recall, which I know you don't, but in that story, uh, there's a moment where Osborn is leaving, and when he's like a goblin, and he looks over his shoulder and he sees a blonde leave. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? Like, I'm in a wing full of crazy ass supervillains, like Doc Ock and Electro and stuff. That is a blonde teenager. <laughs> like, where is she going? And it's Gwen Stacy. And why yeah. is she here? Right. right. So we go back three weeks ago. We're in Rikers Island. Doc Connors, the lizard, is eating lunch in the prison commissary mm -hmm. where he's approached by, like, presumably the warden and a couple of security guards. And they're like, are you Doc Connors? And he's like, yeah. And they're like, get packed. We're leaving. Like, you're done here. You, you, get, to, you get to leave. And he's like, Why? And I love the reaction. He just goes, because a famous person wants to talk to you and they get to do whatever the hell they want. That's why. <laughs> That's very accurate. <laughs> like, he is so disappointed and frustrated. He's like, you're right. a bad person who did bad things, who belongs yeah. here, and you get to leave. And I hate that, but I still have to. But I also have to listen to them because right. a powerful person called me to tell me that I had to do it. <laughs> so, get out. Then we go back two weeks ago. So now a week later, we're, well, at the, we're at the Triskelion. Gwen Stacy. Every page is a week. Is a different friggin' time. It's okay. a different time. Gwen Stacy's being questioned, let's say. Where they're like, what's your name? What do you remember? Where are you from? What's going on? Tony Stark is in the booth where they're like coming up with these questions, and he's like, what do you remember? What's the last thing you remember? She's like, I was murdered by like a goop monster on my friend's lawn. And they're like, oh, that's, just, that's how much you remember? You remember like up to the minute? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, because those memories were implanted into me because I'm a clone. By right. Connors. Yeah, exactly. I'm totally a clone. Um, so they're like, all right, well, we know that you also, like, you can do other things. Can you, can you show us what you can do right now? And she's like, okay. And then there's an explosion in the Triskelion. And it's like, you assume from the visuals that that's because she blew it up, but no. It's yeah, like, she activated her power. It's, right. But it's, it's coincidental. No, the, the explosion happens and she's like, ah! Oh, okay. So we don't get to see, we just get to wonder, what is it, what could no, she no, we do? No, no, we follow her. No. So Osborn leaves and that story happened. That's the, that's the Goblin right. War. Right. Where uh, he murders his son. And uh, so- Is this gonna have something to do with, with the symbiote, symbiote, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Gwen's like, Gwen goes topside from the island of the Triskelion, sees Manhattan, she's like, all right. So then- Oh, home's that way. Okay. Yeah, so she's, we see like a dock on land and a like red tentacle, like attaches itself to a beam and then she reforms from it. Oh my God, what? Yeah. Like what? She's a tentacle? She is a symbiote. I'm sorry. What? She is a symbiote clone. They used like some element of the symbiote technology 
You know, the technology was made to made symbiote to make symbiotes, right? To make like a sentient copy of of a person. Yes. Now they were they meant to be making clones. This is from the Clone Saga, going all the way back to the right. Clone Saga. They meant to make clones, but they were they ended up making her because I guess the some part of her imprinted onto the Carnage symbiote or the uh-huh. like. And so, as a result, like there's a there was a genetic copy of Gwen Stacy within the symbiote DNA. Well, yeah, it was digesting exactly. Her. Well, it it just kind of stabs her. Oh, it sucks it out her sucks her, her, her energy juices. or whatever. It, yeah, yeah, it just sucks all of like the juices out of her, and she's like a dried up husk. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I guess it also included her brains and her memories and stuff. So <sighs> she is now a like she's able to form into a person, but also she can become like a symbiote. And it's not like there's a person under there. She just is, is that. a symbiote. That's right. So Gwen Stacy is still dead. Oh, yeah, no. That Gwen Stacy died. Okay. This yeah. Gwen Stacy... But this one is just like is her, just like except her it's and a symbiote. Even her remembers except dying. it's not. No, but... Like, but it remembers everything that she remembers, like... It is her. It, it, yeah, like, it, isn't it that is, what you are? Is, it's just your sum total of all your memories? Exactly, and if that's what she is. I mean, like, there is a body, though, in a coffin with well, her name yeah. on it. yeah. Which is our old uh, teleportation but, but, debate. Right, but I no still one... say you're dead in there. Yeah, they make a... Who's you, though? <laughs> the dead one. <laughs> <laughs> if, if any part of me has to die, I've got a problem. Yeah. Anyway. Sucks for you. Y- yes. But for every, literally everyone else in the world, uh, it's as if you never die. Except it's also, if everyone in the world uses that technology, then everyone on Earth is annihilated. And just... Yeah. Just, just, uh, <laughs> and imitations are walking the the earth. Yeah, and but they're the functionally identical to you, though. Yeah. So, so yes, Earth continues. We all die, but though. everyone yeah. is dead. Every every natural born man, woman, and child on Earth is dead. If you use the technology of teleportation that suggests yeah, that if you enter it, yeah, it copies you and makes another one of you. And yeah. you wouldn't miss a beat. You'll, the world will go on everyone as else if won't nothing miss a beat. changed. Yeah, that's true. That's the, the world will go on as if nothing changed if the, everyone on Earth died anyway. The world goes on anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, everything yeah, that happens still, here... But humanity would still exist. That's true. The human race would, 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 would persist carry on. if nothing Except had happened. it wouldn't be because they'd all be goop people. Because it's not goop. Well, no, no, in, in our it, scenario, it's not goop. Yeah, no, but this, this, is this, this is a goop clone. This is a goop this clone. Is, she is different in that respect as well. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> that she could turn into goop. Re- Which actually enhanced. Turn into I goop. think it's better. Yeah, this is an improvement. Yeah, on no. the original model. Right. I think it's better. I guess my point is, like, she thinks she's Gwen. Yes. And, and if anyone met her, they think and she's they Gwen. interacted with her, it'd be like they were. It'd be as if they were talking to Gwen. One hundred percent. Until yeah. she envelops someone. Well, well, yeah, and now her life is that. diverged because she was imprisoned and she yes. knows she's a symbiote, so right, it's yeah. just like, I'm a monster. So it's yeah. like, okay, you're ruined. Nah, so, <laughs> it's too bad. So Peter and Mary Jane are making out in front of the school, as we talked about at the beginning of the episode, and she's like, whoa, hold your horses, they're tiger. Right. And uh, then Eddie Brock walks over to them. So Eddie Brock has been peeping on these kids making out, and he's like, hey, yeah. it looks like life's good for you. You get to make out with... 15 year olds like I wish I were apparently and uh, and they're like Eddie knock it off and he's like okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell everyone you're Spider-Man and I'm gonna ruin your life unless you help me get my symbiote back and he's like I'm not, I'm not gonna do that and he's like okay well you better because if you don't you're gonna be really famous and I know you're not gonna kill me because you you know you're a pussy and so he leaves and Mary Jane's like what are you gonna do and then we cut to like Tonight and it's raining and Pete's swinging through the city and he's like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. And it's like, yeah, I mean, like, I might have like, I don't know, been like, Eddie, come here, <laughs> and just punch him in the face. I mean, like, I'm, I have the proportion strength of a spider. I can crush your head. I know you think I won't, but like, I, I beat people all the time. Yeah, I hurt people all the time. I'll yeah. hurt you a lot. And, and and most of them don't give me a good reason. <laughs> Here's you're giving me the best reason. <laughs> you're an absolute menace with that suit. Yeah. You're a murderer. I watched you eat a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but an entire horse. I'm never gonna get that image out of my mind. Right? I'm never gonna get the sound of a horse being eaten, <laughs> whinnying and neighing as it gets engulfed. Yeah, what does that, that sound like? I, I, oh. I'm, I'm about to beat you near to death just for that. Just for that. Can you imagine if you outed my identity? Right? What, what, you what know, I would do? You know what? I, there's actually a great Homelander quote for this, where it's like, you know what? Yeah, let's light this torch. You know, sure, I'll lose everything, but then I'll have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, oh I'll call uh, the Fantastic Four. Nah, they're not there. I'll call the Ultimates. And I'm like, this is classic Spider-Man stuff, where it's like, I am dealing with Venom. Even Venom stuff, like Venom stuff is always him being like, I know, I'll call any of my friends in the superhero community. Oh no, they're all conveniently not here. Mm. And you're like, good idea, Pete. Well, Give at the try. moment they're having their ultimatum. Like he is heading, yeah, he actually is heading towards like the Ultimates vet headquarters and their Quinjet is leaving. He's like, wait! <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, okay, I have resources, I can do this, I'm Spider-Man, I'll go to the Daily Bugle, and I'll I'll Google things. So he does, and he Googles like symbiotes, and he goes, wow, it's funny, I've, I've never thought to Google symbiote technology. Like, I've never thought, like, has my father's paper been, like, published? Like, is there is there actual information about what I'm dealing with on a regular basis on the internet? Yes! He is sweating buckets. No, he it rained on him. He's he just he ran oh, in from the rain and right. like and he's just dripping wet from the rain. He actually says he like, was just googling Zerner. Oh like, my god, this is really stressful. <laughs> it's like, hey, can we turn the heat down in here? But uh, no, he's just like yeah, he's he's just googling feverishly. He finds out all this nonsense about Trask and Roxon and statements about symbiotes and how they're going to be the next stage in cancer research. And there's even a quote from his dad and blah blah blah. And then ultimately, it just it all just goes like there, it goes from a big deal to no every sensationalist article you've read about how like if you just eat beets. <laughs> you will beat cancer forever. Oh, wait, actually, no. Like, you know, or, hey, yeah. did you know scientists have just discovered that they can cure total cancer in rats with this wonder drug that you've never heard of again? Like, and then you Google that thing that you just remembered, and you realize that you read that seven years ago, and you think if it was that revelatory, it would actually be yeah, something by that's now used we should today. Have it. Yeah, and it's and like, oh, then I guess it was nothing. Yeah. yeah, that's what symbiote technology is on the internet in the ultimate universe. And there's a great moment where like Robbie's like, what are you, are you working right now? He's like, oh, this is something for me, is that cool? He's like, knock yourself out, man. <laughs> you seem very busy. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, okay, uh, this sucks. And uh, I know now that like my dad's research was co-opted by like special interest groups, like rich people fucked over everyone. Like this is all the result of rich assholes who already had everything who wanted more. Damn it. Well, I can't let somebody else get the money. Yeah, so he's like, well, now I'm madder than I was before because now I'm reminded that the world outside sucks. So he leaves. And then he leaves everything open and Ben Yurick comes over and he's like, what are you Googling, Peter? Like, what is this? But he says it to himself. What is what is he looking for? I don't know. Like, he's, he's just trying looking... to come with a way to like defeat the problem because how would learning about symbiotes help him? Right. I, I think he's just like, he's out of ideas. And I, I, this is the thing that Peter just does. like, what is this thing that's vexing me anyway? I don't even really know about symbionts. In, in the 616 universe, this is a classic Spider-Man thing, where Peter is put into an impossible situation or into a situation that he ha that, that he can't get out of. Mm -hmm. Or he Peter's put into a situation where he has no leads. What do I do? One might assume that he would talk to Aunt May and be inspired in some Independence Day-esque clandestine conversation where she says something about wheat cakes and it relates in somehow to the problem at hand. But mm -hmm. that is rare. Yeah, that's the symbiote is like wheat intolerance. Exactly. What normally happens, like in the Carnage story, to relate it to symbiotes, mm -hmm. Pete's like, I don't know how to beat him. So I'll just go back to his orphanage right. and just Maybe be inspired. Yeah. Like, it's just, just let my mind wander in the place where my enemy congregated, mm -hmm. you know? And that helps him draw together a couple of leads that ultimately results in him finding carnage. So he's a reporter. Yeah, right. He's like, I'll Google symbiotes. Maybe it'll teach me something about, like, the players, the factors, like, what's involved, and right. that'll lead me to something. Like, it's just, it, when you're a smart person, I hear this from smart people. Uh, I wouldn't know myself. If you are trying to solve like a problem and you don't have any other like vantage point, it's best to like step away from it and like clear your head. You know, like take a right. walk or do another task. Go do something else. Exactly. Right. So that's what he's doing. You know, right. he is. He doesn't know how this is going to help him. No, but he's like he's going symbiote. symbiote adjacent. Not, as far as you know, the, the symbiote's not even around. Right. Like it's gone. He has to deal with Eddie. Right. He's like, yeah. I got Eddie's his problem, but I guess he can't Google that because nothing's gonna come up. No. Well, <laughs> even if he did, like I know where Eddie is. He's over there. Like yeah. he's giving me a hard time. Yeah. I, he it, wants me to get him the suit. Do you yeah. Think, Obviously, he, I know where he is. He's think, gonna meet up later. Exactly. Is it that part of it was like, well, what if I do want to meet Eddie's demand? Like, how would I even do it? Yes. 
Okay. Right. I can't even like. So it, is he? Has he decided that he is going to get the suit for Eddie, or he's not really thinking about it? It, it doesn't really come up. Okay. So what he does do is he eventually goes home, and when he arrives, Gwen is in his room. She's like, listen, I'm kind of like losing control of the situation here. Because I'm Gwen Stacy, but she's got a carnage face. Oh my god. I, I love this visual of like, yeah, I'm Gwen, but like... But I'm kind of not. Like, I don't know what to do here. But I'm also kind of carnage. Right, like what do I do in this, in, the, in this case? And he's just like, what the hell? I have a paper bag. So then we cut to t- now... I guess. It's just now, but it's, but, it's, but it's Eddie on the bench. it was today. Right, yeah. That should have been yesterday. We are cutting to yesterday. After now. But, but that was... But before... But that was today. This is all after yes. today. Yeah, this was today. This is today. This is was this previously tomorrow? To, but here it says yesterday. Yeah, I guess this is tomorrow. Where Eddie's on the bench. Waiting for Peter. No. no. He's just there. Well, yeah, we don't know no, what he's doing there. We don't yeah, know why he's Yeah, this is there. what happens after everything. Yeah, it's just weird because after the war. Why Dave, would you call it today if it's not today? No, he didn't call it today. No, that it's was never him. that was never called today. No. What was called today was I thought where he is with Gwen now because I yeah. thought he I thought today that was, no when he's with Gwen now that was yesterday when he was what was today today I think was, I was the was the was, was the school three weeks ago two weeks ago and then. No, that was yesterday. No, today no. was there him was making out with. Yeah, what? yeah, it was it was Eddie. And today Eddie came through. Yeah, yeah. today Eddie was. Assuming things. So clearly, him running into Gwen was after that because he's yeah. like, "What am I gonna do? What yeah. options do I have?" It's right on the heels of that. Yeah, so this should still say today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is right. <laughs> okay, so it's it must be wrong because this is the same day as this. Yes, but it says yesterday now. Right. Okay. All right. That's frustrating. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, when no, I was, no, when no. I was writing was it, it, not it the was same today. because, and then when is I, the, or is this a flashback? No, because t- is this is this a flashback? No, this is now. Okay. Okay. No, because today was the makeout. Yeah. Eddie gives the ultimatum, and then it becomes nighttime. He goes around. He goes to the Daily Bugle, and then runs into Gwen. Right. But that's yeah. now called yesterday. Right. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Like, why is that called yesterday? Because this is now. Because now has advanced. Yeah. Previously, well, that was now. Now, now is at the bench. We got to understand. Yesterday, when I wrote the scene of them making out, it <laughs> yeah. was today. But now that I'm on to the next day, where yeah, I'm writing it. for me, it's it, another day. Right. Right. So so it was yesterday. Was yesterday. <laughs> so I wrote yesterday. But when will then be now? Soon. <laughs> so Pete's like, what are you? And she's like, I'm Gwen Stacy. And he's like, no. No. no, because Gwen was not a goop Gwen, yeah, Gwen is a body in the ground. Gwen couldn't put a carnage face on her face. Exactly. She's like, no, like everything I am is Gwen. Like I remember everything. I am her. Like I have those feelings. Like I'm, I'm Gwen. Right. Yeah, the only I, thing I, different is I look like carnage. Right. And he's just you know, like, are you going to hold that against me? Right. I mean, just because I'm hideous, I'm not Gwen. And she focuses and she gets her Gwen face back on. Mm. So while Pete's trying to parse this situation, mm. there's a doorbell ring. And uh, Aunt May answers it, and it's Eddie Brock in a classic Eddie Brock versus Peter Parker Venom story that we saw when Michelini wrote it with uh, you know Tom McFarlane drawing it, and where like Eddie Brock goes to Aunt May's house. In that story, Aunt May's kind of an idiot. Mm. And he's like, "Hi, Aunt May, is uh, Peter around?" And he like helps her with the laundry and stuff. <laughs> uh, in this, he's like, "Hi, I'm Eddie Brock. Is Peter there?" And she's like, "Nope." And he's <laughs> like, "I think he is. <laughs> Let me in." And she's like. Do you have like superpowers, Eddie? And he's like, not right now. And she goes, okay. And she pulls out a gun and she's like, get off my property, you <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> like my my <laughs> husband died because of this scenario right here. Right. And that's not gonna happen anymore. And then Eddie grabs the gun out of her hands, and then Pete just immediately webs him up and punches him across the yard. Right. And he's like, Yeah, uh, don't attack my family. I'm now I'm gonna fucking pull your fingernails out. Like that's <laughs> Here's the thing. You came here and you threatened to expose me. You come to my house. You came to my house. I'm going to be very house. upset. Where my aunt makes wheat cakes. <laughs> yeah, but you threatened my aunt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to say a whole new side of Peter. Exactly. So he just grabs and he leaves. It's <laughs> like, like, we're going to take a trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. You're going to love it. You know, remember, you, you, well, you love field trips. You were just at uh, one of mine recently. Uh, it's going to be a little further away, though. Uh, so... You're going up. to the moon. <laughs> so uh, Aunt May seems to like suggest she's going to have another heart attack. She had a heart attack before. Oh. And then uh, a, a, a besuited man arrives and says, Mrs. Parker, are you okay? And she's like, oh, it's, it's Tony Stark. I don't know why oh. we're bearing the lead for some reason, but uh, Tony Stark. So uh, so Pete like throws Eddie onto a convenient roof in a 
industrial area. Uh, Gwen followed and she's like, what's going on? And he proceeds to go like, yeah, dude, here's the thing. Like you are, like we're practically brothers. Like I love you, I'm gonna take care. I wanna fix you, I wanna help you. But like your desire for this symbiote thing is messed up. Like here, this girl here was murdered by a symbiote. <laughs> and I want you to see what she's become as a result of that. And you do your thing. And she turns into carnage. Oof. And he's like, look, do you want to be that? And Eddie's like, yes. Yeah, of course I do. That's yeah, what, what I am. <laughs> that's, and, what I'm, uh, that's what I'm literally saying I want to be. I want to yeah. be that. I was right. eating people. What Remember you? when I told you to get my suit back? Right. Obviously I want that. Yeah, but we assume- Remember like, when I ate that horse? That was intentional. <laughs> but uh, Pete, I'd never be able to do that on my own. I think Pete assumes that because he would never want right. any of that, right. that the symbiote can, is making him want to do that. Right. It's like, you don't have the symbiote. You don't have to be like that anymore. Yeah, Eddie. he's like, no, I am an asshole. Y yeah. With the symbiote, like, I'm a bigger asshole. Right. That's like, I always wanted to be that. Yeah, I, now I have power to back <laughs> up like me being a jerk. Or like something in me or whatever. Who cares? Yeah. But uh, the when point is, I'm just like this. Uh, this is who I am. So he reaches out and the Carnage symbiote starts wrapping up into Eddie. And then he says, it was in me, it just needed more. Thank you. And then turns into Venom. What? And you're like, what the fuck does that mean? That makes no sense. And I guess the idea is that like there was some part of the symbiote that imprinted onto Eddie or, or, or copied. And so that piece that Eddie needed was within him the whole time. And he needed more symbiote in order to get... Yeah, it just got sucked out of him. What? Mostly. What? Like the symbiote... What, but what about the symbiote that was friggin' removed from him? Right, like was it always in him? Was it removed? I guess the idea is that like Eddie didn't know that the symbiote was already in him to begin with. Maybe the symbiote is just like energy. It, no, but it was physically, a, physical not physical on thing. him. It's a physical thing, but think about this. So like, you're Eddie, and you have the symbiote, and your energy's at 100. Uh -huh. But then like, you get zapped, and your energy's at like, five. Right. But now you come in contact with more energy. Right. And you leech some of that energy off. You're like, there. So he, so he grew more symbiote inside him? I, I, I don't know. Over We're time, just, he's like, it okay, so it, it went off me and it went on Spider-Man. Yeah. But it left behind like 5% of itself. Right. Inside me, I didn't know. And as I was like eating food and stuff, it was like regenerating and getting like the size or amount that there was before. And so, so now I'm just Venom again. Yes. But what happened to that Venom that got pulled off of him? Right. And I don't know if it's whether that like, the, I assume he thought it got pulled off of him, but actually it was within him. Like, yeah, but Spider-Man was, like, was Venom. Yeah, but then it, but then he got hit by like Thor lightning. Yeah. So like maybe it retreated and went or back maybe it to went Eddie. Back on Eddie, yeah, and nobody we never noticed. Got an no, because we show Eddie and he saw that happen. And he was crying and peeing his pants. Like <laughs> we don't see it like follow him. There's no shot of it. Yeah, like, and going the on ultimates his foot. aren't like, oh, it got away. No, they do say they couldn't find it or like they. Oh. Nick Fury talks about like how we need to get it and like prod it and like you know. But dissect they don't it, have but they, it. But they don't actually well, say we have it. Maybe it dies on its own. Yeah, maybe it died. Yeah, maybe they thought and, it was destroyed. But some part of it is still within Eddie, and it like regrows. Well, because like, it, it's not like because it's not really alive. It's right. always there. It's always a part of him because it did bond to him. Right. It's more like and a when virus. it got detached right. and it hit with the lightning, like yeah. oh, or that when part it died. To, when it left and went to Peter. Yeah. And then Peter gets up with the lightning, like that's dead. Yeah, that part's dead. But the piece that left itself behind in Eddie is still there, and it could grow. And right. because it would it take a long time, but right. now I have this thing. But I got this right thing here. that's attacking me and I can like leech from that. So they fight. You know, but right. the but the carnage so, is fighting because it's like it's sentient and it's yeah. when. So it's deliberately fighting Eddie to protect Peter from Eddie. Okay. And so, so, so basically Eddie's like a vampire. Yeah. Like he's no, you, you can't Eddie's, not be Venom. Eddie's right. like, like a you're Venom battery. forever. Yeah, because we, well, because the, the reason why he's so hungry is because like he's missing a piece. Like he needs something to replenish the part that he's missing. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he's eating people and why he didn't eat people before, you know? But now he's So wh else. where did that piece that he was missing go? Right. Because you're saying it was in him the whole time, actually. Yeah. It's so, more metaphorical. I guess. It's about I, like the thing that we're all missing, you know? Yeah, it's about the symbiote we're, mo we're all missing. <laughs> Wait, in this story, did a piece of venom create carnage? Uh, it is, it? no, it is a clone using symbiote technology. Damn it, because if right. this was like a piece, if this was the piece he was missing, this would right. make a lot of sense. If it was like, oh no, that was like my I mean, child, they must my have used They must have used a piece of it or at yeah. least some kind of like element to make it, but they did use symbiote technology. Didn't they also remove a piece from him? Or Beetle some took point? it, but he's yeah. gone. Yeah, but was that related in some way? It doesn't matter. I, I, <laughs> like, what is the? It doesn't what matter was, because it where comes did up that later. go? It, it went that in, plot thread. Right. Is that going to come back? It comes to, back in the last. Oh, page. okay. All right. Okay. 
So Gwen and Eddie fight as symbiotes. This is the symbiote war. <laughs> right, the last it's two the, phases. These two symbiotes punch each other. Right. So then... And Gwen is like kind of a good guy. Yeah, she's a good guy. She's protecting Peter. Protecting Peter, even though she did like jump on Eddie, which is a little bit of a bad guy thing, but... Well, I mean, Eddie's maybe, being an asshole anyway. Maybe right. she can no, no, control No, no, she didn't her. attack Eddie. Eddie reached out and the suit like oh, enveloped and him. It, like, and it became... And he like grew a venom. I see. Okay, I thought she was like punching him. No, but it she was like not like attacking like, him. He was like... <laughs> yeah, it's more like it... It, he drew the proximity of, from like her. He's a, like a symbiote magnet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So then uh, Venom essentially becomes like a giant goop hand and just like splashes onto Gwen Carnage mm. and then absorbs all the symbiote out of Gwen, leaving behind a perfect clone of Gwen Stacy with no symbiote powers. No. What? <laughs> no. This, look, the, the, the point of this whole thing is Bendis regretted killing Gwen. So Pete like fights this giant, insane looking Venom now. Gwen is recovered by Iron Man and some S.H.I.E.L.D. agents while Pete and Eddie are left like alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pete's like, hey, Eddie, come on. And <laughs> Venom goes, no fight. And he says, what? And he goes, I have what I want. And then descends into a sewer grate. So what you wanted was the symbiote part of the Gwen clone? That that worked just as well as whatever I was looking for. <laughs> to become Venom again. Or I learned that Venom was in me the whole time or whatever. Right, either way, Peter doesn't get heart headaches and Venom isn't hungry anymore. Oh, well, there you go. So I guess that all Somehow. works out. And also, apparently, Eddie's body can also go into the symbiote because he goes down a sewer grate. Yeah, like oh, he yeah. is the suit now. Yeah. The suit in here won. He's like, please, Cassidy. Exactly, he's like Carnage yeah. yeah. So then uh, they bring Gwen back to the Triskelion to ask her some questions. They do some, you know, bio readings. And they find out, like, you're just a full-blooded human being now. No symbiote, no nothing. There's nothing left. Right. And so uh, I well, guess... That's exactly what a symbiote clone would look like. Right. But they're like, so I guess you can just go home. Like, you can just leave. Right. And yeah, go back to your parents. I'm sure that's going to be... Well, no. Awkward. they. Well, the, her father's dead and her mother never wanted her. So they're like, I guess you could go live with Aunt May. And then Carol Danvers shows up and she's like, actually, I'm afraid she's going to have to stay here forever because we're... Because she's I'm officially a, dead. Yeah, and and you I, can't have dead people walking around. No, no. <laughs> she's not like worried about the continuity of the neighborhood. She's just like, I'm in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. and she was a symbiote thing and we, gotta, we don't even understand what happened. Right. And it's not like she even has a birth certificate. She's not an American. Well, except so she I is. So I can do whatever I want like, with her. Right. Well, it, well she, she wasn't born here, was she? Well, she is. Because she the wasn't thing born that was at born, all. I guess. But do clones have rights? I don't think so. Yeah. Either way, they're all like, no. <laughs> they're like, shut up, Carol. <laughs> and so they leave. And so uh, Gwen gets to live with uh, with with Aunt May and Peter now. That's and so okay. she's she's back. Yeah, that's not going to be God incredibly damn confusing. It. So then we cut to the present. Right. Now today. Where this, that was all yesterday. No, today yes. and the present are apparently two <laughs> different things. Yeah. So then this dude is like sitting there next to him and he's like, wow, so like you fought Spider-Man? Like, so what are you, some kind of like monster or something? And then Eddie turns into Venom. And then he, that is to say the passerby that's sitting next to Eddie, activates a wrist-mounted suction laser that pulls all of Venom into a thing, and then he activates his armor, turns into the beetle, and says, I've got him, Lord's bless Latveria, and then flies away, and that plot never really comes up ever again. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing! Doctor Doom. What a great last made reveal! <laughs> Hooray! It was the beetle the whole time, and he took Venom away and brought him to Doctor Doom? Yeah, Doom wants symbiotes. And, and you know why? No. Because in the main Marvel Universe, at the exact same time, Bendis is writing the Mighty Avengers, and in that story, Doctor Doom has a symbiote bomb that he sets off in America, and you're like, okay, so like, you were writing a story about Doctor Doom and symbiotes, and then you were writing this other story, and you thought, oh right, well, but Doctor Doom needs the symbiotes, and you <laughs> forgot what universe you were in. Or, or he's just like, the you know people what? who are reading this main story aren't buying that main story. I could sell two books with the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to write a lot of different stuff. Like, you know. Right. So, like, if I if, uh, if I, I use the same ideas in both books, it's like half as many ideas. And uh, twice the many books. Right. I, the, the, I think the problem is that Bendis thinks, like, his interpretation of Doctor Doom 
is that Doom thinks symbiotes are rad. Right. Like I think that but he's you like, invented no. that. Right, but you invented that, and they're two different universes, Dooms, and neither of them that you've written are accurate. Right. Like, like Doom your, never wanted that. Doom would or would never have. do or say any of the things no, you he ever just did. make Look, him do or say. No, he just did. Look, it's in that book. You can pick it up on yeah, its stores now. Right, but they paid me top dollar to make that happen. <laughs> All I'm saying is, you can make the symbiote look like anything, which means I can make it look like undamaged skin. Oh yeah, I guess. You oh, can wear like a thin that? layer of symbiote and look like hot Dr. Doom. It's I, like, no, I had, you know what it is? I had two ideas for how Doom, what would do, what would happen if Doom got the symbiote? Yep. I was like, I can go in two is, different directions with that. And you know what? I got two books. Yeah. I could do both. I could do both. Why not? Well, why <laughs> why leave one story idea in a drawer right. never to be revealed? What's the point of writing two books in two different universes if I can't just like use, use all, my ideas. all my ideas? Yeah. I, I, I guess I I guess I don't know. You know? Brian. Like, it always drove me crazy when I was writing for like one continuity and I, and I had like, this idea, and then I had this other idea, and it's like they're incompatible, and I'm like, no, I can never do it. But now, no, damn, I I'd have to make a choice, right? But right. Now I don't have to. Sweet. <laughs> well, they're both totally satisfying. No, I'm still choosing though, because I actually have like 30 ideas, and there's only the two universes. I know. <laughs> it shows. And they're all equally good. Yeah. I, I would beg to differ, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, when you're reading it, it's kind of fun and page turning. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the look, his art dialogue is, is always dollar. good. His dialogue is always. If it wasn't good. as confusing, I would have a lot less problems with. It's what just happened. the it, days it, and the dates. Oh and like, God. why? Like, why? And it's like, stop I, jumping around. I think he did it because, like, that's the most kinetic way to do it. Like, it's yeah. the most like frenetic. Oh, oh my God! It's all like, if what's I did happening, it, what's this? It, what's that? Yeah, if I just wrote it like this. You know that you, you, you It'd be know a little too straightforward. Where, you know where it's going. You know, yeah. nobody complained when Pulp Fiction ended <laughs> with a scene that takes place earlier in the story. Okay, right. they gave him an effing Oscar. So yeah, give me but, my Eisner for my yeah, but you, you, confusing continuity. You didn't do that, did you? Because this ended at the end. Yeah, this didn't end. <laughs> yeah, this didn't end months ago. <laughs> that would have been yeah, different at least. Seventeen weeks ago, you just told a linear story and then cut up all the pieces that shuffle them around. But only in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Granted, it was done, I mean, I know why he does it. He does it because like, but that's how I get the most like mic drops yes. and the most cliffhangers exactly. and the most reveals. Right. Because yeah. I can s s construct it where if you told it linearly, there'd only be a couple. Yep. But if I chop it all up and move things around, Man. I get like tons of them. Yeah. You'd be surprised how often there are uh, breakneck hairpin turns and twists and surprises if you completely alter linear time. <laughs> yes. Thank yeah. you. It, it is fun and it's great and I still love it and everyone is consistent and cool and I'm like, I'm here for it. Yeah. It's like, uh, there's a new Ultimate Spider-Man now uh, in a new Ultimate Universe going on, written by Jonathan Hickman and it's a different Peter Parker in a different Ultimate Universe and that's great because I, I honestly would not accept any other Ultimate Spider-Man written by anybody other than Brian Michael Bendis. Mm. So I'll take like whatever that fake Ultimate Universe is that Jonathan Hickman's working on as long as it's over there and not this Peter. Because this Peter is the exact, it's the same Peter with the same writer for the entire saga. Yeah, I'll, I'll never accept any other version. So, yeah. you know. Here's to Bendis coming back one day and maybe picking up the torch. I don't know. I doubt it. I feel like it's never going to happen. I'll come back and pick it up and pick up where I left off. Several weeks ago. <laughs> several months ago. Today. Yesterday. An hour ago. Three. Now. Either way, it's in the comments down below. You can get a copy if you'd like it. Uh, I would recommend it because it's a great series and it continues from here. Next one is Ultimatum. Seeing uh, Gwen with Carnage's face was a surprise. That's great creepy as hell. Yeah, I love cool. it. I love it because it's so creepy. Yeah, that's really Peter, creepy. I don't know what I am. She just And she sounds normal. It's like, it's like a teenage girl's Peter. voice coming out of it. Hey, uh, her her dialogue, she's just like, uh, I, I don't really know exactly what to do. And it's like, that is such a frank and earnest way to... That's an understatement, honey. <laughs> what you're describing, because you have a Carnage face on right now. Also, you're dead. Like, you are a dead woman wearing the face of your murderer. Yeah, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite the Helsinki syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. I was going to say, the only thing I don't believe in this entire book is Ben Urich getting to look at the screen and putting like pieces together. How does Peter not just because, like log out? What the hell? No, he's a 15-year-old boy who's on the internet. Yeah. He's going to close the windows and erase his brother. <laughs> That's right. That's just, like, That's just instinctive. He doesn't even know he's doing it. That's muscle memory at that point. 
Uh, well, I'm getting away from my computer. <laughs> uh, what was that? <laughs> huh? What was what? what? What was what? I just I was just logging out. That was not logging out. You logged out of a lot of things. You went right into there. your system settings and changed things. <laughs> you deleted cookies. Well, what? Why? I, don't know, I blacked out. I don't know. <laughs> I want Peter just. All right. Well, time to be Spider Man. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! What was that? Hmm? I think you did. Where your eyes I rolled back out. in your head. See you later. <laughs> Same thing you did when you logged out of your computer. <laughs> Fair enough. Ben. <laughs> uh, oh, right, of course. Uh, let's never speak of this again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs>